what's going on guys JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City video this time we are going to be analyzing the Manchester City last 16 second leg emphatic I think is a good word to use for the 7-0 10-2 aggregate win over German Bundesliga side Schalke 04 so we're going to crack on with this video we're going to start off first by talking about the teams only surprise I was expecting for us to go with Stones and Laporte if Stones was fit to go on the bench then he was fit to start we didn't instead went with a makeshift team Walker went in at right back and Danilo went in at centre back alongside Laporte and Zinchenko. When I first saw the team sheets, it was on City's website that it was showing that Danilo was at centre back. I thought personally that we might see Walker go in at centre back because he has played there a couple of times, certainly when playing a back 3 2. But we did go with Danilo. And he didn't look out of place. I wouldn't be su surprised to see Danilo possibly even start at centre-back again at the weekend. Uh, or possibly, or most probably, he might even go into defensive midfield. Quite interesting. Uh, and we also had Fabian Delph on the bench. I have no idea where Fabian Delph's been. Uh, I was under the indication that he'd been fit. He just weren't in the squad. But he made the Champions League bench for this game and even came on. We also saw Humphreys onto the bench too. And Phil Foden too for Schalke. We saw their centre-back Sane starting. We also saw Briel Mbolo, who I think was injured for the first leg, make his return for Schalke. We saw Rabbi Matondo, the former Manchester City man, on the bench, and I don't think he came on in this game. So, we'll crack on with the game, and her first chance came through. Raheem Sterling was clear, cutting in from the right, squares it across, Aguero's there to try and tap it in. He ends up hitting the foot of the post, and it ends up going wide. Now, uh, that was a big chance, big opportunity for Sergio Aguero. I'd expect someone of Sergio Aguero's quality to have put that in the back of the net. He'll, be, he'll have been disappointed that he didn't put it in the back of the net. Uh, I thought Raheem Sterling looked marginally offside, so I'm not too sure who had City scored, but that goal may well have been allowed on VAR. We'll talk more about VAR in a moment. But 34 minutes in, Gundogan tries a smart ball into the box. Bernardo Silva's checked out by the defender. Referee gives a penalty. VAR, after an eternity, checks it, and the referee uh, decision stands. Penalty given to Manchester City. Sergio Aguero with a lovely cheeky chip down the middle. 35 minutes in, boom, Manchester City 1-0 ahead. Now, um, it's one of those decisions where if the referee hadn't have given a penalty and it had gone to VAR, then the referee's decision would have stood. Referee's given a penalty and the decision stands. So it's one of those where it's a close call. Might not have been a pen, might have been a pen. You'll go with the referee's call. Right decision made, in my opinion. Had the referee not given a penalty and VAR said it was not a penalty, in my opinion... I think that would have been the right decision too. Referee's decision there. It's the referee's call. It's a close call. Now, 38 minutes in, just four minutes later, Gundogan tries a long ball in. Raheem Sterling's running in from the right. Back heeled, managed to get an assist to Sergio Aguero, who fires at the near post, making no mistake this time. And it ends up going through the keeper's legs at the near post. 2-0, 5-2 on aggregate. Offside was checked, and it was an eternity again for Raheem Sterling. For a simple offside check, shouldn't really be taking longer than a few seconds. Either is or he isn't. Um, it was onside. It was about half a yard onside. Uh, everyone could see that it was onside. The goal stands. People were confused in the stadium what was happening. I thought City's um, announcer, stadium announcer was perfect in telling everyone what was happening. In. I thought that the big screen was perfect in letting everyone know what the decision was. So all that needs to happen now is a replay on the television so people know what the check-in and can see it for themselves. And then, in my opinion, boom, you cracked VAR. Then it's just down to the referees being competent or not. Now, 42 minutes in, Zinchenko played a lovely through ball into Leroy Sane. He cuts in, shoots, and manages to slot it in for 3-0. As simple as that, we ended up scoring, I think, three goals in seven minutes there. 6-2 on aggregate. Leroy, the class man that he is, doesn't celebrate as you would expect. Went in at half-time, 6-2 on aggregate, 3-0 up. Job done. VAR was the talking point, really. It was really slow. I will add that in the second half, they improved it, and it was a lot quicker. And it worked well for once. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Gundogan, he was absolutely bossing in defensive midfield. He's been brilliant. Well, we've not really missed Fernandinho being injured because Gundogan's been so good. Manchester City haven't really been put on the back foot by many teams, and so we're playing lovely, expansive, um, attacking free-flowing football, and so Gundogan's like a deep-lying playmaker. Kevin De Bruyne is out injured. He's like Kevin De Bruyne Mark II. We're not missing Kevin De Bruyne being injured. It's incredible, isn't it? And he's just playing lovely balls over. Everything's inch perfect. 
but perfect performance. Like I said, three goals in seven minutes. Could easily have had another. Schalke not really had a sniff in the game. Um, and there we go. I thought it was a good opportunity for us to send some youngsters on in the second half, which we saw one. Uh, I'd like to maybe seen Humphreys come on, but there we go. Now, next up, Lira Sane. He put the ball to the back, um, ends up putting the ball in the back of the net. The offside flag was up after I think he rounded the goalkeeper. Uh, they got to wait until the attacking move done, then make the decision. So his decision was offside because if they put the offside flag up beforehand, Sane had stopped playing when he might well have been on side so they've been told just to take it easy don't put your flag up immediately wait to see what's happening with the chance then put your flag up uh, half a yard offside right decision made didn't take long to make that decision next in 56 minutes in Raheem Sterling ends up making it 4-0 7-2 on aggregate this time Lee Rossani plays the ball across for Raheem Sterling there the offside flag goes back up like I said the linesman's got to hold back wait for the ball to go in the net then put his offside flag up and this is why VAR shows actually onside goal stand bam 4-0. VAR used right, and it was used rather quickly. Gabriel Jesus ended up coming on for Sergio Aguero, some rest for Sergio Aguero. I imagine Jesus will play against Swansea, so now he's got a, uh, a two and a half week break, which is good, well deserved from Sergio Aguero. We also saw Phil Foden come in for David Silva. I was wondering if we might see Humphreys. We didn't, as Del came on for Laporte, as he went in at right back, and we had Walker and Danilo in at centre back. Incredible. 71 minutes in, Lero Sane was played in again by Zinchenko. Both of them had lovely games, didn't they? Uh, and Sane squares it, not even looking up, just blindly just plays it into space. Who's there? Bernardo Silva gets a low shot, keeper gets a good hand, doesn't get enough onto it, gets it onto the inside of the post and into the back of the net. 5 0, 8 2 be Schalke on aggregate. 78 minutes in, it's incredible, this isn't it? Zinchenko finds Leroy Sane in the middle, plays him the perfect ball into Phil Foden, who's in, rounds the goalkeeper, slots in, delighted for Phil, his first Champions League goal for Manchester City, and the calls get louder and louder and louder for Phil Foden to be starting games and getting more minutes. And to be honest, I agree. I've already done a video on Phil Foden and what the future holds for him, how he should be patient. The next couple of seasons, he'll start getting more and more minutes. And he's showing that he is maturing into a sensational young football player, only 18 years old too. 84 minutes in, the madness doesn't stop. Gabriel Jesus, 20 yards out, has a low shot. Keeper, his near post should be doing better. Two or three of these goals really could have been avoided from Schalke. Um, keeper would have been happy. Ball goes into the back of the net. Delighted for Gabriel Jesus. Like I said, I'm expecting to get a start against Swansea. So it'll be lovely for him to go and get a couple more goals. 7-0 on the night. 10-2 on aggregate. Full-time record Champions League win for Manchester City. We dominated um, Shakhtar Donetsk, if you remember, when we played them in the group stage. This performance, in my opinion, was even better. Absolutely beautiful. Last eight, here we come. This is the joint highest knockout one-leg win ever in the Champions League. I think Barcelona might have done a couple of the, the records, which are also 7-0, but Manchester City just matched them. And uh, the, the uh, crazy thing is, City played phenomenal yesterday. We can play even better, as crazy as it sounds. So we'll have a look at these stats. I did see on Twitter that uh, Schalke, their Twitter, did apologise to their fans. The fans were amazing, made loads of noise, looked like they had a great time in Manchester. Piccadilly Gardens with them sliding about, that was hilarious to see on Twitter beforehand. So I hope that they enjoyed their trip to the Etihad and did have a, a good game. Uh, I imagine their manager may well be losing their job. But like I said, uh, Schalke's come to play their game. It's always dangerous when you're not going to sit back. This is why teams part the bus against City, by the way. When you leave too much space trying to make things happen it's always dangerous when you're going into a knockout phase over two legs because you need to do something otherwise you're just going to lose you end up being on the underside of a drubbing and also you end up being very demoralized as well so it'll be interesting to see how Schalke pick themselves up for the weekend they have got a match against Red Bull Leipzig now uh, possession stats 72 percent possession for City it was as high as 90 percent in the first half in several parts of that first half that shows you how dominant City were 28 percent possession for Schalke 15 shots for City 11 on target clinical seven put away into the back of the net like i said the goalkeeper would be disappointed with two or three of them but really good for manchester city's attackers in this game two shots for schalke just one on target clean sheet for edison great for him 789 passes 92 percent pass completion rate phenomenal that's brilliant i thought there was a couple of loose passes when linking play between zinchenko and sane uh, and uh, trying to track back the defense schalke never punished us for that but still to get it to 92%, it's brilliant. And particularly offensively, that left-hand side with Zinchenko and Sane, it's a joy to behold. That's why it's gelling so well. Teams are struggling to attack us to exploit the defensive frailties that we certainly got because they're just so damn attacking that we're just scoring goals 
and teams struggle against us. And once we get on top and teams park the bus, you're going to struggle to create any opportunity. And um, by the time you're uh, trying to work yourself into the game, you might find yourself already behind and you're trailing and then you start making mistakes. And like I said, it starts getting mental, then it starts getting demoralised and physically and mentally, it's incredible. 293 passes for Schalke, 73% pass completion rate, 14 key passes for City, just one for Schalke. Clear cut chances created four. Shows you a couple of out of the box chances for Manchester City there. Um, all in all, brilliant. Six crosses put in by City, just connecting with one. Ten ball put into the box by Schalke. Again, just connecting with one. Three corners to one in Manchester City's favour. Quite low, that, in my opinion. Uh, recoveries, City ended up having ten more recoveries than what Schalke made. In terms of tackling, Schalke dominating a little bit more. 17 tackles, 12 completed, 70% pass uh, tackle completion rate. Same for City, seven tackled out of ten, so that's 70% too. City had more interceptions, Schalke had more blocks. Schalke just had more clearances. City had more headed clearances. Aerial duels, City were more dominant at the back when doing the aerial duels. Our keeper had one save to make their keeper had four. We committed more fouls. So there we go. A dominating performance really, Schalke really poor, the manager's under pressure, is he going to lose his job? I imagine the job uh, is on the line at the weekend in the Bundesliga the 14th, they're possibly in a relegation scrap and for a club like Schalke with the players that they've got, just shouldn't really be in that position, they looked low on confidence yesterday, but um, lots of teams get drubbed by Manchester City uh, if they can just pick up a couple of good results they'll be able to build their season on that for City, Sterling, Foden when he came on Aguero, Bernardo Silva, all awesome Zinchenko, excellent he's like a little magician playing in for build up at left back, it's perfect Gundogan, my man of the match, absolutely super in defence and midfield uh, like I said, he was just a deep line playmaker pulling all the strings. Everything was going through Gundogan. He was excellent. Leroy Sané, a very, very close second. He had a wonderful performance. Certainly should be starting for the game on uh, Saturday. And so it makes it very interesting going into the last quarter of the Premier League season and now the Champions League quarterfinals and possibly an FA Cup semi final if we win on Saturday. Who's going to be playing all these games? Riyad Mahrez has been having a couple of good performances. Leroy Sané finding his form. Raheem Sterling, Bernardo Silva, they're all wonderful players. David Silva again, he, did, he had a good game this time, David Silva, so he's starting to find his feet, look very comfortable with the ball and Sergio Aguero is Sergio Aguero, we went business, I wanted us to make a statement to Europe, I was a bit worried about last night, about uh, the performance and all the shocks that have happened, hell look, Juventus beat Atletico Madrid, Atletico Madrid that love keeping clean sheets, never seemed to concede more than one goal, conceded three times to Cristiano Ronaldo as Juventus went through 3-0 Atletico Madrid, where where the final is at their stadium, out. Real Madrid, out. PSG, out. Barcelona still standing. Liverpool, Bayern Munich tonight. Be very interesting. I would love to know in the comments below who you want Manchester City to face in the Champions League quarterfinals. What I put on Twitter, and I meant this, that performance yesterday was phenomenal. The statement was sent out to the rest of Europe. We fear absolutely nobody going into this quarter-final. We've also got the semi-final draw on Friday too. I will bring you the latest on that on my Twitter, so make sure you check out my Twitter link in the description below along with my Instagram. If you want to go and follow me on there, I'll keep you up to date with all things Manchester City. I'll also cover it on YouTube in my Manchester City latest news, which will probably be up earlier next week. So... Options are FC Porto, who I'd love to face. We've also got a difficult game for us to draw against Ajax. And also, like I said, you've also got the Bayern Munich-Liverpool uh, game coming up tonight. You've also got the big game uh, going on from the other side, which is Barcelona against Lyon. Both of them, nil-nil. Would you rather face, would you like to face Barcelona get it done with? It'd be very interesting to find out. You've also got the other English clubs that have gone through too. So I'm talking Tottenham's gone through beating Borussia Dortmund, Manchester United, not PSG out. You've also got Manchester City, who's also gone through through and also you are looking at Juventus too so let me know in the comments below who you would like Manchester City to face so there we go emphatic performance perfect performance we're through we've got another cup game coming up against F uh, at the weekend in the FA Cup we've got Liverpool playing on the Sunday are they going to go over us in the Premier League or are they going to drop points again um, away from home in 2019 uh, if they do, Manchester City can have a game in hand and still be top. It'll be interesting to see, lots to look forward to, lots to talk about. So plenty more content coming from me. So make sure if you are interested and you want to be kept up in the loop with all things Manchester City previews, analysis, latest news, reaction videos, transfer news, then make sure you subscribe, press the bell, put your push notifications on. Like I said before, social media links in the description below. And I'll see you all again for the next video. We've got a reaction video coming up tomorrow. So that's a good, uh, interesting, funny video coming up for you to look forward to. We've got that coming back. So there we go. So 
So I'll see you all again tomorrow for that video. So it's been JSGC. Hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace. Ciao for now.